right. Monday Night Raw. So, Alright, we kicked things off with, what? With Roos having a fight with these two guys? I, I, I don't know if it was supposed yeah, to be I, a match. I think he was meant to be fighting Orton. I mean, the, the show kicked off with him knocking Corbin and Orton out of the ring. Mm. <clears throat> then you had that big, bald head of Lashley appear on the Titantron. Boring Bob. And just, oh, what, what can I even say about this one? Just... So, Bob was in a hotel room. No, he was in Rusev's house. Oh, fuck. Oh, no. He was wearing Rusev's dressing gown. Oh my god. And of course, predictably, he was in bed with Lana. Yeah. Like they did this three years ago with Lana and Dolph Ziggler. Yeah. I think it was Dolph Ziggler anyway. It was, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't work then. It ain't gonna work now. What is Vince's obsession with adultery? <laughs> I mean, the only good thing to come out of this was that then Rusev went outside the ring and kicked the crap out of Corbin and Elton. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, literally that was the only good thing out of all of this. I mean, it was like he super kicked Corbin, he went into the crowd. Oh, oh don't forget he launched him into the uh, steel steps as well. Yeah. Orton got fall away slammed into the barrier. <laughs> yes, you know, as crap and awful as the angle was, it's nice to see this ruthless aggression <laughs> side of Rusev. Yeah, I mean, they, they're making him look good, at least. What? <laughs> Don't I make someone look good? You have a giraffe, mate. And he does have a good moustache. Yeah. You can pull off a moustache, look. I'm growing mine back next month. Uh oh. I'm doing Movember again. Watch out, people. God damn. <laughs> Can't stop the <laughs> moustache. <laughs> so, we've got our first match of the night. Okay. It's the deciding match in this feud that people. May or may not have cared for. Yeah, the fifth and deciding match. Because seeing it four times in a row wasn't <laughs> enough. We got Natalia versus Lacey Evans in the last woman standing match. Oh, okay. Effectively, it's exactly the same as her last man standing Yeah. <laughs> just, it just has women. Yeah. Uh, no. Women. <laughs> well, I didn't dislike this match there were part there's a huge part I disliked okay I mean but that that's all the way at the end okay it was okay there was a few good bits I suppose but Natalia is Natalia <laughs> yeah and Lacey Evans is well I don't think it's They've done her much service since she's done this whole Southern Belle character. Yeah, I know. I think they should have kept her as, you know, the whole military vibe. Mm, yeah. So, let's move to the penultimate end of the match. Okay, I'll, I'll get my run out of the way. Right, for a good ten minutes of this match, possibly longer, yep. Lacey Evans was kicking the crap out of Natalia. Yep. With everything. I mean, Christ, what didn't she hit her with? <laughs> Natalia kept getting up. Kept Ki getting up. Kitchen sink. Yeah. <laughs> Just kept getting up from everything. Mm -hmm. Every move she did. Getting mm -hmm. up, getting up. Like 10 minutes of solid crap kicking out. Okay. And then, what, she just magically got this strength out of nowhere? Yep. To power bomb her off the stage? Through a table. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was conveniently there. <coughs> so, yeah. And Lacey couldn't answer the ten count. So you're, you're telling me, what, 15 times, possibly, maybe even more, Natalia kept getting up. 
Yep. And Lacey couldn't beat a 10 count one time. Pretty much. <sighs> well, I'm, I'm just glad it's over and there won't be a sixth match. Yes. Yeah. Which means there probably will be a sixth match. Uh, <laughs> okay. Oh, we've got some tag team action next, player. <laughs> we've good. got the Viking Raiders. Oh. Take it on. Z- Glorious Ziggles. Glorious Ziggles. A good day at the office for the tag champs. No, I mean, that, they tried their best. Mm. But let's be honest here, this team of Ziggler and Rude, it's makeshift at best. Yeah, yeah. It's, of course. It's what we call a transitional reign. Mm. But unfortunately, Ziggles got hit with the Viking experience. <laughs> Yes, and he very nearly dropped him mm. when he was doing yeah. it. Sort out, Ivor. Ivor. <laughs> no, no, we, we did that last week. <laughs> oh, man. So I've heard on good authority, they beat the tag champs. So you know what that means, man. No. They've got a tag title shot now. A crown jewel? I don't know, I think they might be rushing it for next week. Oh, well, well, these things happen. Well, so, you ready for a Dutchman to kick the crap out of two Indians? (laughs) Well, (laughs) sounds like a typical Friday night for me. (laughs) (laughs) Where do you go on a Friday night? Parts unknown. (laughs) (laughs) You pass by Dudleyville yep. on your way there. Dudleyville, the bottomless pit, <laughs> and all those gimmicks. No. So, if you haven't already guessed, we've got Alistair Black. Yeah, he's demanding someone pick a fight with him. So we got a handicap match instead against the Singh brothers. Yeah, they're going to show him some Bollywood. <laughs> what? Well, they didn't show the good side of Bollywood. <laughs> Yeah. So I think straight away one of them got taken out with a black mask kick. Yep. And the other one got beaten up for a couple of minutes. Then the other one got back up, got hit with a black mask again. And Alistair's got a submission move now. Really? Yeah. I don't, I'm not sure if they've given it a name yet, no. but uh, yeah, he... Basically, like, has them on their knees and he puts them in, like, a reverse headlock and then mm. pulls them back. <laughs> and whichever sing brother it was, <laughs> was tapping. Well, we don't know if it was Herp or Derp. Could have been either. Sunil and Samir, man. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, it's like talking a crush match, isn't it? <laughs> Got no one for you. Hey, what we got this time? We've got the OC in action. And they're facing the Lucha House Party. Oh, now that's just unfair. Why would you do that? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, damn it. You know, I'm not even going to review this one. Just looking at the match, you know where this is going. Yeah. Right, I am going to skip all the way to the end of this thing. Because one of the luchas, I don't know which one. Ooh, they I think got, it was Lince Dorado. He got hit with the Super Styles Clash. On the middle rope. Yeah. And that was business taken care of for the OC. Yeah, it was like... <laughs> Thanks for coming. <laughs> for the easiest paycheck you guys are ever going to get. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so next, we've got the women's tag team champions. The Kabuki Warriors. And they're facing Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair. Yes. Now, originally, this started out with an episode of Miz TV. Oh, bloody Wiz TV. Where he was interviewing the two champions, I'm guessing hinting at a Survivor Series match. Probably. 
Like, and then they got a few shots at each other. And then the Kabuki Warriors came out and started rambling in Japanese. <clears throat> to which the crowd started going, what? <laughs> oh, I'm glad you've brought this up. So, um, I don't know if you saw it the other day, but uh, someone actually translated the uh, the Japanese rant. Yeah. <laughs> and the standpoint of Oscar's argument... Apparently, it di- directly translated to, we're going to beat the slut out of you. Oh, God. Oh, boy. Crazy. So, this got turned into a match. Yeah. Ugh. Oh. Ugh. Oh. Not good. Not good, man, at all. I've seen one. So, it ended. I think the... Becky have Kyrie in the disarmor. Yeah. And then Oscar come out of nowhere. Green misted Becky's arm. She didn't get her in the face, really. She just had some pain, like, above her forehead. That's good. But Becky still sold the hell out of it, and Kyrie won with the roller. I'm pretty sure Bliss and Cross interfered at some point as well. Yeah, I... I think they possibly in commentary or something, or do they just appear? No, they just appeared. Yeah. Caused the distraction. Yeah. We have Bliss and Cross put the beat down on the tag chat. Ooh. They want those titles back. Mm-hmm. I could be wrong, but I think that's the first time Becky's been pinned in quite a long time. Yeah. Oh, man. It's obviously off. Favourite fine Irishman. Finley? In action. No, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. Second favourite. Oh, damn it. You had my hopes up there. I thought Finley was going to come out of retirement again. <laughs> You've got Ricochet. And he's facing off against Apollo. What? The, just Apollo? Cruz. Oh, okay. Oh, that guy. In a draft showcase match. Yeah. Apparently network agents are watching this match. Ooh. To see who to draft. Ooh. So you're telling me the draft is down the USA Network and Fox. Yeah, apparently they're sending network executives along. Ooh. And they're going to be making the draft. Ooh, fair enough. So, we're going to cut the chase. Yeah. Ricochet one with the record. Oh, not not the the 054. No. No, oh, is is a 630 spot. Oh right, yeah. I'm thinking uh, of Ali's I'm, got the 054. I'm thinking of Ali. Yeah. Well, there's so many people do that move. It's come mm-hmm. on. Right, so moving on somehow, we finished the show with Tyson Fury. Yes. <laughs> he got given an open mic. <laughs> and he wasn't happy with Strowman. He demanded an apology. I think you're going to get one, man. Oh, that brawn just came out. <sighs> he was like, hey, man, I was just having a good time. I didn't mean to... Bash him. Yeah. Mm. So inevitably, he got physical. Some punches were thrown. I don't know. At first, the security came out to try separating them. God, that's never going to end well, is uh, it? And what do you think happened with security? When when security always come out, what is the one thing that tends to happen? Well, to put it simply, Braun and Tyson had a competition who could knock out the most security guards. There were bodies flying everywhere. Yeah. And then what they normally do after the security gets knocked out, they send wrestlers down. Yeah, I think near enough the whole roster came out for this one. Mm. Hey man, broke it off. And despite all of these wrestlers holding them back, they keep getting loose. Mm. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> uh, eventually Braun was just like, no, nah, I've had enough of this. And he wandered to the back. Yeah. And then he came back. Yeah. And ran back down to the ring. <laughs> oh. 
And did anyone try and stop him? Oh no, they just moved the hell out of the way. So what, we literally ended with the two of them in opposing corners, going, Oh, I'm, I'm going to get you. No, no, I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. What does this mean? Is this another match they're going to be doing at Crown Jewel? Yeah, wouldn't be surprised now. Celebrity match for no reason whatsoever. <sighs> yeah, but you can, you can look forward to the draft on Friday Night Smackdown. Right. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm spent. Okay, folks. That's it. I just, I, I, I can't take any more of this. <laughs> and did you notice who wasn't on this show? Oh. Oh, right. So, 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 yeah, yeah. Funny enough, you bring him up. Yeah, so, so apparently, apparently the fiend wasn't cleared to compete. Hmm. But after the show went off air, I think it was it. I think it was it. First, Tyson Fury like knocked out Cesaro. Yeah. And then after he disappeared, the Fiend came out and attacked Cesaro. Cesaro. Yeah. So I mean, he's having he, oh, on not clear to compete, but then you have him do a beatdown after they go off oh, air. He's gone rogue. <laughs> He's defied the doctor's orders. Oh, no. All right. That's going to do it. Yeah. As always, folks, from your hosts, the master of the brain damage, Martin, and the one and only Sam H. We'll see you again for the next one.